Unity is a great engine when it comes to making both 3D and 2D games. And the first thing you have to learn about when it comes to 2D games is something called sprites. Sprites are the building blocks when you make your 2D games. And in this video here, I'll try to go through the basics of sprites for when you first get started on making video games. So what exactly is sprites and how do we use them? Sprites are essentially 2D game objects that are used in your game and they can either be made as a image or they can be made as a Photoshop file that you import directly into Unity. This means that if you have an image of your player character or if you have a background environment like trees or rocks or something, then those images would be sprites. But now when you just start building a new game, you usually don't want to spend too much time on trying to make all the sprites for your game. So therefore not to waste too much of your time, we usually make something called placeholders. A placeholder is basically just a very basic sprite that we start with while we're developing our game. And then later on, once we do actually have the final sprite, we then replace the basic placeholder with the sprite that we made. This is a great way to do it because it helps us get started on the game without having to have the sprites ready before we can start do any sort of development for the game. So to create sprites, we have something called a sprite creator inside Unity that is built into the software, which is basically just a very fancy way of saying that we can right click inside the hierarchy window or we can go down into the project window, just right click and then create a new sprite. When you create a new 2D sprite inside Unity, there will be a sprite renderer component attached to that sprite. This is something you can see inside the inspector window. I hope I'm pointing the right direction here. The sprite renderer is something you will need to get very familiar with since we do use it quite often to change the properties inside of it. Sprite, for example, is used to change how the sprite looks like. So later on, once we do actually have our own sprites ready, we can go in here and replace the placeholder sprite with the one that we made ourselves. Color is used to change the color of the sprite, so to make it easier to distinguish the sprites from one another. For example, blue for the player and red for the enemies. Flip lets us flip, 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 flip. <laughs> flip lets us flip the sprite on the axis. This is commonly used when we want to flip our characters when they start running a different direction. So, you know, instead of them running backwards, we need to flip the character to make it look like they're running forward. Mask interaction is used to determine if the sprite should be hidden inside or outside the mask. Masking is something that we haven't talked about yet, but it is something we'll discuss in a future episode. Now, the sprite sort point I will return to in just a second since it won't make a lot of sense just quite yet. Material is where we can add any materials to our sprite. So maybe you want to change how the light interacts with the object or maybe you want to reflect the environment around the object. And then we also have something called additional settings, which is also very important to know about. For example, to make sure that the background environment environment stays in the background and the player stays in front of everything inside the scene. And now since we're talking about sprite layers, I also want to mention that we do have a component built into Unity that we can add to our sprite called sorting group. This component also lets you change the layering of the sprite, but it does it in a slightly different way. If you were to have set any sort of options inside additional settings inside the sprite renderer, if you were to add a sorting group, then it's going to override whatever you have inside the additional settings. What it also lets you do is is if there's any sort of child elements of this game objects, it also goes in and sorts the layering for those elements as well. So now that we know how to layer our sprites, let's actually go and return back into the sprite renderer and go to the property called sprite sort point. Now to better explain what this setting does, I will present a small dilemma for you so you can better see what it actually does inside our game. As a default inside Unity, what Unity is going to do is that it's going to say, well, if you have two sprites, let's say a player and an enemy, and you have them on the same layer, what it's going to do is that it's going to say, well, the character that is closest to the camera is going to go in the front and the other one is going to go in the back. However, sometimes when we create a 2D game, we might want to create some depth along the Y axis going downward, meaning that whatever character is going to be further down inside the scene is going to be the one that goes in the front. So if you want your game to have this vertical depth going, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go inside your project settings and on the graphics, we need to change the camera's transparency sort mode to custom axis as well as set the Y axis to one and the Z axis to zero. This now basically means that any characters inside the same layer is going to be sort of based on the Y axis rather than which one is closest to the camera. So now if I go into our scene, you'll see that my player character moves on top whenever he goes below my enemy character. And this finally brings us back to the sprite short point setting that we have inside the sprite renderer, because as you can tell, something doesn't look quite right when we place these characters above each other. The reason our player is jumping on top too early is because our sprite short point is currently set to center, meaning that when the center of our player is further down the Y axis than the center of our enemy, it actually jumps on top already then. We want our player to jump on top once his feet, are further down the y-axis than the enemy's feet are down the y-axis. 
So to fix this, we set the sprite short point to pivot, which is another setting we can customize in our sprites import settings. Now to find the sprites import settings, you simply click the sprite down in the project window. And then inside the inspector, you can see that we have the import settings for that particular sprite. Don't worry too much about all these settings here. All we need to focus on for now is the one called Pivot. In Pivot, we can select where on our sprite we want Unity to register the sprite. So instead of Center, we can set it to Bottom, which now means that the Pivot is going to be by the feet of the player instead of in the center. So now that we did this for the player, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the enemy here. And now if we go back inside the scene view, you can see that now the characters jump in front of each other at the right moment. So as soon as the feet start going below each other, you can see, whoop, it jumps in front. And that's exactly the effect that you want to have. And with this, you now know how to create sprites inside Unity and how to sort of customize the way they're rendered inside the scene. And I just kind of think that learning about 2D sprites is a really good way of getting started with Unity. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next video.